It is my greatest pleasure to invite the next speaker, Professor Gerard Mourou, who was uh, with the ELIMP project uh, from its beginning and uh, even before that, and who I can say that he was a mentor of the project and he helped us with uh, very uh, wise uh, advices in the most uh, challenging uh, uh, times and when we had we faced problems with the implementation. So, uh, Professor Gerard Mourou, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello, can you, can you hear me? I have a microphone for me from the back. Hear me. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You can hear you. Oh, very good. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so I, I can start, right? Yes, you can start. Okay, good. Well, it's, it's really a great pleasure for me, you know, to be part of this event, okay? Because this started about 15 years ago, um, almost, you know, and from a simple idea, you know, something that we discussed with Toshita Jima, about uh, uh, if we could really uh, build one day a very large scale systems, you know, in a, in a petawatt regime, okay? And several petawatt regimes. So uh, really to open up, uh, you know, a, a, a new field is the field of extreme light physics. So, uh, on my screen, there is, uh, I'm with my, this is my favorite uh, slides where I'm with my, sh uh, I'm sharing, I'm with myself and, and Donna, you know, together receiving the Nobel Prize. That was, of course, it was an extremely emotional event, in event. And here, I'm here just to show you what I think you know, we could go, you know, the next step, okay? Uh, because 10 petawatts seems to be pretty high, okay? But, um, so, um, here I'm showing my slides. Is it well-centered? Can you see it? Hello? Hmm. Hello? Yeah, we, I think we can see it. We can, can all see it. can see it. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. You, okay. Because, I, I, okay. So you can hear me. Fine. Yeah, yeah. All good. That's okay. So uh, this, you, you, I think everybody knows this, this, uh, this slide and this curve, uh, which shows the intensity of the function of ears. And uh, we are in this area here at you know, uh, with Eli, around 10 to the 24 uh, watt per square centimeter, soon, I, I hope, to be achieved. So the question is, of course, uh, you know, uh, how far could we go? You know, could, how far could we go? Uh, right now, we are 10 to the 25, but you know, I mean, the previous speaker talked about the Schwinger field and so on, and uh, we, you know, we we likely to go much higher than 10 to the 25, in fact, okay? So you have two ways to do it. I mean, either you really increase the energy as uh, the pulse energy, which is, of course, you know, uh, something which is very pricey and difficult to do. I mean, considering that, you know, uh, if you want right, to increase the, the energy of uh, pulse by factor 10, I mean, or 100, you know, you have to have something which is 10 or 100 times you know, the size of EI, which is, I think, uh, something which um, is difficult to, um, to, to anticipate. So the other, the other way, of course, is really trying to shrink the pulse durations, okay? 
keeping the keeping the energy that we are able to uh, to achieve now okay but try to compress the pulse to um to a factor of 10 100 maybe a thousand times okay so um and of course this will be very important because then we will we will go into a here very completely different regime so this, this is what i'm going to what i'm going to discuss okay this slide here uh, is I, i love this slide because it's really capture capture um, what is going on right now what's going on now, right now with laser is the fact that we are moving from the atomic physics um, domain into the subatomic domain okay and uh, which is very very rich okay uh, now uh, in order to do that i mean in order to go as i said you know uh, in this uh, yellow uh, regime or in this um, uh, non your qed regime and so on uh, i proposed really to to compress the pulse you know and uh, and i will show you how we could really go to much much higher uh, intensities by being able to really to compress the pulse to very very short um, short durations and then i'm going to also to to talk about really very very important societal applications okay you will see that by by shrinking the pulse duration we'll be able really to to um produce uh, particles with very very high energy much higher than what you can do now okay and then you have to think about uh, novel really novel applications and so i will talk about that so uh, the idea compressing the pulse okay if you compress the pulse um well i mean of course we all know that the intensity is the energy divided by time or the flux divided by time um now if you um, of course swing the pulse to increase the intensity but the other thing that we can we, you do in fact is that you increase the ponderomotive pressure because the ponderomotive pressure goes with the derivative of your intensity so roughly speaking the ponderomotive pressure goes back 1 over t square okay and so this is very very important to shrink the pulse so not only to get the very high intensities but also to get really very high ponderomotive pressures because the pulse is very short because the derivative of the pulse is very steep okay so how do you do how can you do that i mean first the pulse compression uh this is uh, what we have already um uh you know i dis described it uh some time ago uh something that we have um i the idea about uh, oh, 15 years ago or so okay and now we are really uh implementing it and we are really um demonstrating it so it starts with uh in fact this is this the basic idea the basic idea is really um if you want to to produce a very short pulse of course you have to uh, broaden broaden uh the, the energy spectrums and uh, how do you do that well we, we do that uh classically with uh, by doing self phase modulation so the fact that the nonlinear the nonlinear index of refraction is a function of the intensity so if the intensity is a you know varies during the the pulse duration of course then the derivative will also produce a, a broadening and to, so you will broaden your pulse this way and so this has this has been done you know extensively with pulses at the milli joule level also okay so we can get pulses of only few cycle at the milli joule level okay 
But now what we will ask you to do is to do, uh, to do kind of single cycle pulses at a very high energy level. Energy in uh, 10 joules, 100 joules, this kind of things, okay? And uh, so in order to accommodate this energy, what we use is now the thin plates or thin films of plastics, okay? Thin plane, uniform plate uh, in thickness. And so if we come with the laser pulse, the laser pulse, which is provided by this beautiful 10 petawatt system that we have from uh, Thales and uh, um, then you can really produce a self-phase modulation across, across the beam, a uniform, okay? So then, uh, then what we do is you can really, uh, and here I'm really showing the setup here, you have a 25 femtosecond, you go into a thin, thin films, and then you are broadening the, broadening the spectrum by cell phase modulations. And then uh, the pulse is large, you want to compress it uh, because you have a chirp. So you are using, um, you know, uh, gradient optics. Uh, so we can compress the pulse by um, uh, something like uh, in, in one stage, five femtosecond, and then you are using a second stage to compress it to, to uh, less than five femtoseconds, which means to the single cycle regime, okay? And what's very exciting now is the fact that uh, we, uh, in this work has been done mainly at, um, in many labs, in fact, we have been involved in many labs about compression of high energy pulses. But here, I think the best result has been achieved by corals. Uh, corals, you know, um, <clears throat> in Korea, it's very active and uh, uh, laboratory, and they were able really to compress 25 femtosecond pulses to 7.6 femtosecond. But these pulses now are seven joules, okay? So, <clears throat> So now, in this, you see that the pulse, which is a 7.6 femtosecond, which has been compressed by this technique I just described. And, and uh, so it, it looks like pretty nice. Okay, now, of course, we will have to implement a second stage okay, to compress the pulse even further. Okay, now, so if we have a single cycle, we, are only, we have only compressed the pulse by a factor 10. But already 10 is a, is a big deal, okay? Because we say that if uh, the ponderomotive force with the derivative, so you, you, you are producing a hundred times, hundred effect, hundred times effect. But one, one thing that we also would like right, to do is to go to compress this single cycle pulse, okay? Uh, even further, and how we are, uh, projecting doing that is by, by um, uh, taking a pulse and, and uh, focusing the pulse on the target. And with this target, I'm sorry, okay, here the pulse. And uh, so you have a single pulse, like a simple, sim, single uh, cycle laser, okay, going on a target. The target, of course, is made of electron and positron and, um, and uh, ions, I'm sorry. And, and uh, because this pulse is very, very high intensity, so you will be pushed, uh, push the electrons forward. And uh, basically, uh, it will establish a very, very large um, field, okay, a uh, DC field, which is now going to bring the move the electrons at the speed of light, okay, basically, okay, with a very large Lorentz factor. And uh, <clears throat> so we, um, yeah, this is the one, yeah. So this is 
This is really, we can see these electrons which are really pushed by the ponderometric forces. And now this uh, electron goes back going at speed of light and it's going to compress the input pulse, okay? Um, by basically the Lorentz factor. And so uh, right now, Natalia Novova, a few years ago, many years ago, you know, has um, made the simulations where we can see, yeah, Remember, we can see that the pulse durations as a function of the intensity, and the pulse duration as a function of intensity goes like pulse duration over 600 uh, attosecond over a naught. Okay, so if you have a naught of 100, or 1000, then you, you can really go into a, 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 a pulse of only a few attoseconds. And uh, this technique has a good efficiency, apparently. This is what uh, uh, Natalia has shown. And so we could have now attosecond pulses at a joule level. If, if you have an attosecond pulse at a joule level, of course, you have an exawatt system. Okay. And so um, this will be uh, now also, I mean, we, we, we are looking in the future, we may also go into the sub attosecond, which means zeptosecond as well. So this is very exciting because now you have, you have the possibility of trying to, to, to produce extremely high energy pulses. And that these pulses are so short that they are in the X-ray regime, okay? Maybe in the X-ray regime as well. Okay, so, and they have a formidable energy. So uh, <clears throat> now with these pulses, I'm going to show you in a minute, then you can really produce extremely large wake field accelerations in a TeV per centimeters. Okay, and then also we, can, we could really produce relativistic protons and, and so on. So, uh, Let's talk about giant wave, gi gi giant wave field accelerations, okay? Uh, trying to produce very, very large gradients in the TEV regime, okay? How is it possible? Well, I mean, we know that the, uh, the wake field, right? What we are using uh, is by using gases right now, where we can take the pulse and we focus the, the pulse into this gas jet, and we are producing this plasma wave, which is going to drag the electrons, you know, at, <clears throat> uh, with energy really in, 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 uh, in GeV right now per centimeters, energy gradients of GeV per centimeters. Now, let's suppose that we have uh, X-ray, uh, high intensity pulse, high energy pulse, now, what you, what you could do, you can replace this plasma, you know, this, uh, this gas jet by solids. And you can enjoy this way, you can, you can enjoy an increase in N uh, in electron density by factors 10 to the 6, okay? And, and so you could improve, in fact, the energy gain by three order of magnitudes. That is, you could go from 10 to the um, uh, giga electron volt per centimeters now to tera electron volt per centimeters. So this is quite uh, amazing. Okay, here we can show, uh, the, um, here if you have uh, the, the LHC uh, accelerator, uh, with, uh, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, 27 kilometers in diameters. And you know, of course, if you are using laser wake field acceleration with gas, we'll be able right, to shrink the pulse by maybe the, this accelerator by a factor of thousand, okay? But if you, you could uh, uh, use X-ray, uh, you could really now uh, produce uh, TEV, which is the electron, uh, proton energy, I'm sorry, uh, of accelerators 
on, on, on over centimeters or so, which is, so this is of course uh, uh, very exciting. Now the other things that we can do if we can shrink the pulse uh, to very to dimensions of um, durations of only uh, well, I will say uh, attosecond pulses or so, then uh, it's very easy to produce uh, electrons but also protons of very very high energy of very high energy, and you should be able really, to produce GeV protons, very simply. Uh, here, um, this is a simulation which shows that the energy of the protons as a function of pulse durations. So if you see that, if you have a 16 uh, cycle pulse, which is really the, uh, the type of um, 30 femtosecond, one of the mere 30 femtosecond pulses, 16 cycle, then it's difficult to go, in fact, difficult to go over 100 MeVs, okay? But as soon as you shrink the pulse to few cycle, things improve, they improve very much. And with single cycle, it would be very easy to get into the GeV uh, regime, which is, of course, it's a big deal, you know, um, for protons. Because now you could, re you could think if you are able really to get into this regime, then you, you could think about very, very exciting applications like proton therapy. You know that proton therapy needs uh, protons in the 500s or so, or few hundreds at least, uh, in a um, megavolt you know, uh, energy. And uh, you could, uh, so this already, we could do that with compact, with compact systems. It's very exciting. Um, <clears throat> also, um, you could do, um, you could, you could really do um, experiment in applications, application which are in nuclear physics, not, notably uh, in uh, trying to produce energy, energy by, um, transmutations of, of nuclear waste, for instance, okay? But also you could really, uh, I'm sorry here, I don't, um, I, yeah, okay. Uh, you could also um, produce energy by, by new, new type of reactors, okay? Uh, reactors, uh, nuclear reactors, where this time the, uh, pro, the new neutrons are not produced only by um, uh, by the reactions, but also could be used, uh, could be produced by the laser itself. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> and we could pro produce now a really uh, nuclear energy uh, by using the neutrons, which are produced by the protons. Okay, I forgot to say that, of course. Um, and um, so, so I see that the production of protons, which leads to a, a production of uh, neutrons, will be used now for producing energy. This is very, very exciting, okay? Um, and I'm not going to try to talk too much about that because this is, uh, it will take me too long. I think I've already spent my time. So I, I just would like really to um, really to show, to give you an idea, okay, what, I mean, this field of 10 petawatt and this field of extreme light, I think it's very, very exciting right now. And with the beautiful laser system that we have seen, uh, and not only the system, but with all the experimental area and so on, that we have seen really now is going to lead to some very exciting futures. But I think uh, uh, um, we are far from um, having reached the peak. There's many, many more decades to go in high intensity, okay? And uh, really, I think 
uh, I would say that the best is yet to come. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Um, I think Colin is hosting the thing. So. Can't hear anyone from Eli and P actually. <laughs> 